But one thing I did want to get into regarding Core Boot is we talked about like why someone might want to go and actually install Core Boot on their own system. But from the perspective of like a System76 or a company that wants to sell devices that are Core Booted, why might they want to go and do so? Right, so right now in the EU, I'm not sure if the law already passed or it will it will be soon. Uh, I think uh, it was called digital sovereignty or something like this. Uh, basically requires, uh, like, I'm not sure about the requirements, but uh, I know that there's a certain time that devices have to be supported for. Mm -hmm. And like, if the company doesn't care about the device after like say five years or something, they should in like they should um, release the source code so that people can who are still using those devices. Because spoiler alert, my phone is three years old; it's still perfectly fine. So, like if a device is no longer supported, and they should be able to stay safe, stay up to date as much as possible mm -hmm. and not be forced to upgrade the device just because it doesn't receive security or feature updates from the vendor. Mm -hmm. So by going with the open source route, when you like publish the code, it's all GPL2. Often when you're a system vendor, when you publish the code, of course, you still have some to test it sometimes, but if uh, you open source it, then the community can help you or even maintain the systems on the road. Uh, the best example I would say is um, PC Engine's APU2. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very old system, about a decade old, uh, used as a router. And I know that 3MDEP is currently still um, supporting the core boot port on the, those systems. Mm -hmm. So that people who bought a, like PC engines back in the day, they can still use it and be up to date. Mm -hmm. Okay, no, that's fair. That's fair. So it's how how would I say it? it's it. I guess it's just the same general benefit of most of the fast world, right? Where if people if people have a reason to keep using something, they have the ability to keep it alive, as opposed to the vendor decides, well, you know, it's just e-waste now and mm -hmm. buy something new effectively. Yep. I mean, prime example here would be what I have on my desk currently. So this is a 2015 15-inch MacBook Pro, mm -hmm. which Apple no longer supports. However, it works mostly fine under Linux. Uh, the only problem is the Broadcom Wi-Fi card. <laughs> mm -hmm. As one does, um, one second, I will try to put it down as quietly as possible. Uh, you know, so of course, Apple uh, EFI is not very great, mm -hmm. but you can install Linux on this and still have decent performance. I mean, it has four generation Core i7. Mm -hmm. uh, it has 16 gigabytes of RAM. And I installed, I think, 500 gigabytes NVMe in it. And it's 1920 by 1200, I think, or no, it's, it was like a scale resolution. But mm -hmm. it's still a very nice machine to use. I could uh, do most of my work on this machine. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Apple dropped support for it. Uh, I mean, it, I think it's still getting like security updates, but will not get any more after, I think, in the next two years. I'm surprised they're still supporting it at all. Wow. Yeah. You know, for all the for all the criticism that Apple might get, it, uh, deservedly so, I will say that they do tend to give their devices a fairly long support period. <laughs> that is true. Like, uh, I think that on average they have like what six years for uh, for iPhones. Mm -hmm. And I think six to eight years for MacBooks, mm -hmm. which realistically speaking, uh, after like a decade of using a system, it's it's not that the system doesn't last, it's that you don't last with the system because the software is getting 
more uh, like heavier and heavier, right? Right, right. Well, there's also a lot of a lot of MacBooks that don't survive six to eight years. Like, uh, if especially if they're well, Chromebooks are a good example of this as well. If they are used in a school environment, it is very unlikely a lot of them are going to survive that uh that amount of time i i was at a school that had laptops i that that was already a thing when i was going through school and uh yeah there's a lot of people that don't treat them well we'll say <laughs> throwing yes. them uh you know it, especially well my my school it was it was really bad because we had macbooks so they were throwing thousand dollar bricks around and like it, it's one thing if, if you're throwing around like a cheap Two hundred dollar Chromebook, but look, there are some people that have literally zero respect for anything that they are given. Yes, uh, unfortunately, I can, I can agree with that because sometimes we get uh, teenagers on our Discord related mm -hmm. to Chromebooks who literally are posting themselves destroying the school property and stuff, and we're like. Why? What? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> if you want to install Linux on a Chromebook, please, please make sure it is your own Chromebook. Do not, especially if it's one of the, um, if it's one of the older ones that actually did require, like, physical intervention to to go and unlock it. Like, please don't go and start bridging pins and soldering things on an old Chromebook unless you actually own it. Yes, that's how the big problem we have was that uh, you see teenagers popping in and be like, oh, I want to install Windows on my school Chromebook. And we're like, no, don't do it. No, don't <laughs> mess with school property. You will get in trouble. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> that that actually reminds me of a um I had someone on the other week who does like malware research and things like that, and he has a bunch of people joining his Discord asking if there are ways that they can circumvent proctoring browsers. It's like, no, don't yes, there are ways you can get around it, but just do your exams. Like <laughs> Just don't try to get around people monitoring you doing an exam. It's going to go a lot worse for you if they catch you. Yeah, and considering how, uh, you know, how logging and all the monitoring software in schools work, because I've seen, like, the Google's uh, management console and whatnot, mm -hmm. they will know. <laughs> yeah. Because they can literally see Chrome OS, uh, Dmask, and other logs in the console. They just have to request it from the device, but they will know if you mess with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like I I get why people want to, but you know, it go, it was same with the, the Chrome. I get why you might want to go and install Windows on it or install Linux on it or whatever you want to do with it, but like, just. Don't. <laughs> just, just, yeah. just don't. 